I want to start off part two of my tutorial with some warnings. Motion 5 does a lot of stuff now a lot faster than Motion 4 did. However, there's a lot of things in Motion 5 that are going to bog it down really badly. And in retrospect, Motion 4 handles a lot of these more complex projects quite a bit better than Motion 5 does. If I have all of my layers turned on here, and I've got a i7 iMac 2009 model. If you look up here, you're seeing I'm only getting two frames a second. And that's actually pretty good for Motion 5. Uh, I have bogged this thing down to less than one frame a second, where actually I'd get maybe one frame every nine seconds. So the best thing to do when you're working on a complex project is after you develop a section, start turning off your other layers, especially layers that have filters and or animation. And in this tutorial I'm going to cover how to do this kind of ground cover. And you can see even with everything else turned off I'm still only getting 8 frames a second. 7 to 8 frames a second. And the only way to increase that is actually to turn off the light. When you turn off the light you get a completely different impression of what's going on here. So anyway, with that warning in mind, I think for this lesson, I want to do this ground cover, this like snowfall. So let's get started. I'll start by turning off this ground and just creating a new group, which will be this group here. It was already here. I'll just use it. I'm going to drag this group down to the bottom doesn't need to be, it's just good organization. And if I slide the mouse over to the, the selection column and I get this blue line underneath and let go, then this group will not be inserted into the bottom group. Motion 5 is a little bit more sensitive about this than Motion 4 was, so you got to be a little bit more careful. Make sure that that blue line shows up and you drag all the way over to this left side of the layers column. The first thing I want to do is go to the library and since I already know I'm going to use both clouds and caustics I'm just going to add them at the same time. So I'll start with clouds because I want them underneath and I'll apply and I'll go to caustics and apply that on top. And if I go to the beginning of the project and type I, I'll line them up with the beginning. And if I just play through this a little bit, you can see what's going on. So we'll head on over to the inspector. And the first thing we're going to do is change the clouds layer to something a little bit smoother and more snow-like. So I'll right-click the dart swatch here. I just want to add just enough to give me some variation. Now Clouds uses uh, four layer strengths and the first one is very tight. The second one is not quite as small and so on. The third one you get larger and the fourth one you get larger. So what I usually like to do for this particular effect is just increase the strength for layers 3 and 4 and turn off layer 1 and 2. Now in order to start getting an idea how this works, what the effect looks like, I'm going to click on the group, go to the properties, and under rotation for the X rotation, I'm going to dial this down to minus 90. And then I'm going to grab a hold of my 3D positioner and drag this down about halfway to about a quarter of the distance from the bottom. And then for each generator, I'm going to increase the height until it extends below the bottom of the display. And I've got 2817 here. I'll just double click on that and copy it click on caustics 
double click on that and paste then type enter to accept so now I have both effects here now let's work on the caustics a little bit I want the brightness up you can go all the way to a hundred on this but right now 50 is a good place to start uh, let's dial the refraction down to about a hundred 90 to 100 somewhere and the size will crank it up some and what we're trying to do is get this kind of little effect of drifting snow run the size up a little more okay you can turn the clouds layer on and off to get a better idea what's going on the speeds a little too fast let's slow it down you could use more size you're gonna have to click on the number and drag it up and we can increase the brightness now to a hundred now put the clouds back on and see what this effect is Okay, not too bad. Okay, so let's go back down and zoom out a little bit. Stop playback and go back to the beginning frame and turn off one or the other. Select, for this example, I'm selecting clouds and I'm going to go to the mask tool and I want to select Bezier mask and let's create some shape to this if you hold down the Z key you can click and drag on your canvas to get a smooth zoom and if you hold down the spacebar you can click on the canvas and drag it around with the mask tool I'm just gonna start here and click around the shape and then you can hold down the command key and click on your control points and create smooth transitions between the two and create little curves if you want something like that then all you have to do is hold down the option key and click on your mask and drag it to the other generator whichever one you were using and now you have both of them clipped like that we test with our other items in the um, project if you want change this a little bit We'll go out to the clouds generator and widen it up some. Then I can go back to the mask. And when it's selected and you get this bounding box, you can right click in here and go to edit points. And we can just drag some of this stuff out. Go to the caustics, increase the width. You can just delete the old mask and recopy a new one on. And you can create a scene like that. You got some drifting snow. We add the light. Got a terrible hit on the speed, but when you render this out, render this out with the light, it's a very nice effect. For the snow in the library, if you go to the particle emitters, quickest way to do this is hit the little search icon and search for snow. You have three options here. 
The one in use here is Snow Flurry, which is a fairly decent effect. In the emitter, I recommend scaling it down to about 26% in the master controls. You'll probably have to dial that down by hitting on show. And you can play with the birth rate a little bit if you want to. But you get the idea of the snow coming straight at you, plus with the effect of the drifting of the caustics, you get a sense of a breeze blowing over the scene towards you. Alright, hope this helps, and I'll catch you on the next one.